Test, test. Can you guys hear me? Need to make sure. Still rocking the new mic setup. I'm not 100% comfortable with it. Hope you guys can hear me. Hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> cool. Test, test. Awesome. What's up, dude? I see you, Fletch. All right. This stream is intended to be uh, for educational purposes only. It's not intended to be used as financial advice. What's up, what's up, what's up? Big Connect, how you guys doing? Crazy week. Um, coming back into the new year. New puppy in our house, destroying my house. Working on a bunch of stuff with the Rainbow Trends team, trying to get some stuff out. What's up, Playmaker? Taking all the advice. Well, that would be bad, because um, you've been advised not to use this as financial advice. I always considered, like, just 
flat out con. This is the worst financial advice to ever do not use it and see how that would work. But like I said, not financial advice. Anyway, um, let me post this up that we're officially live. Get some more people in here. If not, we can keep it low key and chill. I don't care either way. This stuff's to help people. And it's archived, so if you guys want, you can catch it any time of the day. Anyway, <clears throat> let's take a look. Let me get this stuff off the screen. Music not too loud. All that's good. We got some new people in the chat. What's up, Zen Master? I don't know who not like this one, two, three is, but that's a cool name. <laughs> so anyway, um, we had some crazy vacation stuff. All went well. Um, usually my vacations or not vacation Christmas time and stuff like that's always usually crazy for my family. But so far we made it through everything. Not too bad. Had, had some doctor visits and had some road trips canceled, but all went well. And my wife surprised us with a puppy, another pound puppy. So I'm currently chasing a little three month old red healer mix with a spunky attitude around the house who has an affinity for peeing everywhere. So we're trying to figure that out. So if anybody has any pee training alpha, please let me know. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, sh <laughs> yesterday, yeah, yesterday I was working from home and literally cleaned up two pee stains right as I was finishing up the two pee stains. A third pee stain started walking my way and she snuck a pee in between the potty breaks outside right in front of my face. So that was fun. How she holds that much, I have no idea. She only weighs like maybe 15, 20 pounds, but she's a good girl. So it's all going to work out. The kids love her and she was only, I think $40 from the pound. So not out too much money. I'll be, I know the vet bills on these things get crazy. So anywho, um, so, long story short, where we're at, there's a lot of chaos that went into the end of the year, and we're getting into the new year, and we've only been, what is it, five days? Five days into the new year. A lot of stuff is going to get shaken out, just like when they're, like, you see, like, new CME futures contracts and stuff open up. We're, we're dealing with the open of the yearly, right? So, a lot of stuff's going to get shaken out. A lot of stuff's going to get tested. Um, we're not going to have a Fed meeting till I think, very end of the month um unfortunately that's going to be like the 30th 31st i think is when that's going to go and then it's going to go into february 1st or 2nd um and that's going to change a lot of stuff there's <clears throat> a lot of hopes he finally pauses but per their targets they've got a few more rate hikes so uh we've we're gonna have to deal with that um it's not going to be bullish eventually the fed's going to pause um doing rate rate hikes but the problem is and it's not, I say it's a problem. Just plan accordingly. Powell does exactly what he says he's going to do. So eventually we're going to get um, the Fed quote unquote pivot is what the uh, news is going to report it as. But in reality, what he's going to do is come out and start saying zero basis point increase, zero point basis increase. But he's going to hold this high rate the rest of the year for the most part, unless something catastrophic changes. So 2023, we're going to get eventually the rate hikes are going to stop per the plan and then it's going to go sideways. Um, housing market's going to take a hit, but we're trying to get inflation under control. That's what he's really fo laser focused in on and unemployment numbers are too good right now. So that's unfortunately the solution has caused a bunch of pain. So, um, it's not, not the funnest thing in the world, but it is what it is. And 2023 is going to be what it's going to be, but, uh, just don't expect the whole market to V bottom out of nowhere. Um, I don't think that's in the cards. You may see something like that in crypto if we have something catastrophic happen. And we've got some catastrophic stuff coming up that I'll, I'll, I'll touch base on. I'm not real sure how it's going to play out, um, but we can touch base on it. But well, let's look at the charts first. So the first one is up Bitcoin. We're just looking at our standard Rainbow Trends 4-hour chart. Um, <clears throat> what's up, Vital? Hope you're feeling better. Um, 
Bitcoin is the definition of sideways. She is chopping. She's going sideways. It's not the best look for Bitcoin. Um, the one thing, like as amazing as Bitcoin is at a bunch of stuff. Thank you for the follow. Um, Retro Petrol. What's up, dude? <sighs> Coming from the oil field industry, I, I like that name. But Bitcoin is not very good at going sideways and being uh, non-volatile. And that's exactly what it's doing. Since we had the FTX fallout here, it's just been like, we're on four hour default settings. We're not even getting any yellows, any reds, any blues, nothing. It's just been chopped sideways and it's been a really tight range, right? It's not the best. 10% is what she's really swinging, which is not a lot for Bitcoin traders. You know, we're used to big moves and coming down from this, that was a big move with an awesome top signal, by the way. Um, and she's going sideways. So my best advice is I don't like playing in this middle range. I like being at the range lows or the range highs and making entries or exits accordingly. Right now, that's in the middle, so I'm not super, super interested. Uh, it just is what it is. I'm not really good at trading 1% moves on Bitcoin. Some people do that and do really, really well, but um, is what it is. But Ethereum is showing some interesting stuff. So let me kill my drawings because I don't even know what those are. So setting up with the default rainbow trend here. Let me make sure we got everything on. We got the version rainbows on. I'm throwing visible range back on here because I missed it. All, shout out to Altcoin Sherpa. He always uses it and that dude's awesome. If you don't follow him, you definitely need to. His uh, Mexico trip was absolutely epic. Um, he hit up a bunch of the cool stuff in Mexico City. That was my favorite stuff in Mexico City. So made my wife cry seeing some of the stuff that we haven't seen in like 15 years, 12 years, 10 years, something like that. So it was cool. If you ever go to Mexico, definitely go check out the Anthropology Museum. They found more stuff there from the Aztecs and Mayans than they have like even room to display it. It's one of the coolest museums I've ever been to. And then outside of it is Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan, Quan, however you say it. I'm going to butcher it. Um, it's the second biggest pyramid in the world. A lot of people don't think like the second biggest pyramid of the world is in Mexico, but it is. And like the base, like it's got more rocks in it than I think the, the Giza pyramids. It's not as tall, but it's a big, big thing. So definitely go check it out if you're ever in Mexico City. It is worth the, the bus ride. But anyway, we saw a sign of life. We saw a well print here. Really good to see this. I don't know why. Correct me in the chat if anybody knows. I have not seen any bullish Ethereum news. Maybe you guys have. I haven't. Um, but it's sent. It's sent pretty well. And thankfully, um, I'm testing on a new bot right now. It actually caught both moves. So I was really happy about that. And overall, my test account for that bot is in the profit now. But it caught this move to this level, and then it caught right at that entry of that candle and rode it up to about here. It closed a few hours ago, so. Shout out to Crypto ISO who inspired that bot, needless to say. And if you have any feedback with the service called Compendium, let me pull it up real quick. Compendium Finance. So... This is kind of a divergent thing, but we're talking bots. So if you check out Compendium Finance, I don't know guys know if you remember Stacked Invest, but Stacked Invest doesn't really do bots anymore. This is probably one of the only things that I've seen that's kind of coming close to coming back and bringing something like that to the market. And if you're not familiar with any of what I'm saying is, um, some people back in the day found a bunch of bot authors. Like I make tools, I make bots and stuff too, but I mainly focus on the tools with Rainbow Trends. I used to do more of the trading bots, but now I'm more tool focused. But there was a company called Stacked Invest that did um, uh, trading bots and you could subscribe to people's trading bots and you could connect your APIs to the exchanges and it would trade your accounts for you. And if you found like the really awesome trading bots, um, you could really get rocking and rolling. And if you know, you can see my buddy FlowFi is about to get his uh, unlocked. It's not here yet, but allegedly at the end of the month, this his stuff is coming online. So shout out to FlowFi, awesome dude, awesome friend. Um, 
It's one of the like five or six quants that I know. Um, he's the only one I'll ever recommend to people, but his stuff is coming soon. So I'm really interested to see what compendium does. Um, they're adding exchanges right now. They used to be FTX exclusive. Um, but now I think they are just OKX and they're about to get Bybit. Um, Maybe Who Boy, assuming if Who Boy doesn't go under. Uh, there's a lot of Who Boy drama right now on Twitter, but I'm gonna wait for that to play out before I officially stream anything on it. But the cool thing is, is it's they're building a marketplace for bots, and I think it's kind of cool. And you can go see like what these bots are doing. And like I said, it's not financial advice, but <clears throat> for a lot of people that lost everything in FTX and lost a lot of everything in like the bear market, the one thing you need to keep in mind, if you can find the right algorithm. Certain algorithms do not care if it's a bull market or a bear market. Some do, some don't. But some of these bad boys only need the, the lines to wiggle. So maybe um, if you're looking for a place to maybe stack some cash on the side to let something that's not human trade it for you, uh, this may be something for you. Either way, I'm, I'm interested in what they're doing and they're talking to me now, trying to get me to offer a bot on here and I'm kind of considering it i kind of want to see what you guys think um i'm not so excited on bot trading anymore on a platform but i'm i am considering it like let's take a look at this one elastic swing bot so <clears throat> this is how they trade um lifetime performance of this bot i wish i could see the time from so okay so that's they've been tracking this bot since may 3rd so since May 3rd, it's made 190%, which is amazing. But the one thing I, I always caveat people, if you've never traded with bots, you have to be able to stomach this. This bot went up from 95% down to 40%. So you would lose like half of your profits there. But if you have the stomach for it, um, you know, you would now be up 190. So guaranteed performance is not ever guaranteed, right? That's not a thing. But because um, a lot of people like think bot trading is, is really like magical and it, it is, but there's a lot of downside to it. And sometimes these bots will eat, you know, four or five losses and then make, you know, six wins. And you have to have the stomach for it. And if you're the type of guy or the type of gal who doesn't have that type of stomach, don't do this because... You're going to be freaking out, especially because you're not going to know how the damn thing's running. But like even this one here went up 20%, went all the way down to 4%. So basically went on a 20% run, lost all the money, and now it's going. And freaking hell, that's awesome. Vertical p &A. So bot trading, it's it's cool. It does damage, but you got to find the right bot for you. And you got to you gotta size accordingly um, so you don't stress out. But they're growing. They're doing better. Um... This seems to be one of the biggest competitors from like what the OG stack team was. So I'm kind of excited to see what they do. My buddy Flowfly and CryptoData are going to be added to this soon. Um, Flowfly is already on here. I think CryptoData is... He's got another bot, the F Swing bot as well. No, they don't have him on here yet, but he's going to be coming soon. So I think it's tentative date is like end of month is what they're going to be launching on Compendium. So cool. And... As always, I like people who are building shit at in a bear market. So, cool stuff, cool site. Um, seems to be a pretty good team. But regardless, I do like FlowFi. So, anyway, and he trades Ethereum, so that's why I kind of got off on that topic. So, anyway, whenever I'm doing bot development, I I literally take my back test and compare into what uh, FlowFi can knock out because that dude is so damn good. But anyway, um, Ethereum has been kind of range bound, not as much as Bitcoin. Um, liquidation levels tool is really coming into play because that's what we're seeing support on, on these liquidation levels. Not so much on the pivots right now on the four hour, but we are seeing it. And it's worth noting. And if you have rainbow tools, you have that tool. So turn it on, look at it. It's really good on H4 right now. Um, the main top and bottom, we gonna use the double pivot down here and the top pivot here. As well as the runner bot top call there. It's good, but we're still kind of in the middle. So we're not at the extremes. If we're really, really lucky, um, Ethereum comes up here, bounces its head up against this, wiggles, 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 and breaks out. That's what would be lucky. But I, you know, I, I don't think we're in up only mode yet. So 
until things are getting really, really stupid, um, trade accordingly. Typically when we get to a range high, it nukes. Um, that's just mostly across the board except for some of the low caps. So just treat it for what it's worth. Sin Master Bear, what is up, my friend? Oh man, we got the, yeah, Litecoin Barts. Ooh. Check out this hairline, that's awesome. The hairline on the Bart was the 5X multiplier. That is super cool. I have not noticed that until just this moment. I'm gonna delete that line. Now, we may be forming another miniature Bart here, or this may go longer and then come down, so tread lightly. But Litecoin for the past month or two has been stronger than the rest of the other alts, um, at least in the OG alt club. Um, so be careful with it, because she's done this as well. When we think Bart's are forming, she's gone up, pumped, pumped again, and then formed the true Bart. So be... Oop, lost my mouth. Be careful there, because this very well may do this. And then come down. So if you're really tight leverage here, you could get liquidated if it does this move. Litecoin, for me, normally follows Bitcoin and Ethereum really, really close, and it's not... It's been diverging and going up, so I'm not really sure why. This is normally a less volatile coin than Ethereum and Bitcoin, but and look at it. It is way, way more volatile than Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. I have no idea why. Um, there hasn't been any news dropped on Litecoin. The Litecoin conference didn't have any groundbreaking things dropped or any groundbreaking plans coming. So I'm not really sure why this is getting messed with, but keep in mind the last bear market Litecoin was one of the first things that got messed with. It's an old, there's a CL207 post a few months back that points this out and I thought it was really good, but we'll see. Let me pull up something. I'm trying to find it on the Discord. Um, I think, does DCG have... Let's go. Grayscale's struggling, if you didn't know. Oof. Let me take a look. There's a lot of stuff getting posted right now about Genesis having issues, as well as the DCG, which is like the, the parent company of um, Grayscale. Yeah, just shut down. So here we go. So this is going to be news for the rest of the week. Um... Genesis parent company D DCG is, you see people refer to DCG, they're referring to the Digital Currency Group, just shut down its $3.5 billion wealth management division as the crypto contagion continues. So, unfortunately, it looks like Silver is going to get margin called. I think. Maybe he saves it, maybe he doesn't, I don't know. We have to watch this play out regardless. Uh, until the dust settles, let this print. This is bearish news. Yeah, there's going to be probably a bearish thing for all the Grayscale assets. So let me pull up the Grayscale website. So this is the Grayscale website, grayscale.com. You can go look at their products and they have a single asset product group. So you can actually see what all it is involved with. Well, let me show it. So there we go. Explore all products. So... These are the coins you need to watch out for because there's potential here to if Grayscale gets squeezed, these assets under management are going to get dumped on the market. Is that true? I don't know, but it's potentially there and the timing is now. If DCG is really getting squeezed, this stuff is at, um, at risk. So you're looking at BAT, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, Chainlink, uh, Decentraland, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum, Filecoin, Horizon, Litecoin, LivePeer, Solana, XLM, Zcash. Uh, I don't know what those are. I think these are buckets. And then the Grayscale Smart Crap platform, whatever. There's a million dollars in it. It's pissed. So, anyway, um, not good. Uh, I wouldn't touch any of this stuff, personally. I think it's at risk. I mean, it's just, there's, there's, there's FUD for sure. And then there's like, where there's smoke, there's also fire. So keep that in mind. 
Um, if she goes down, this is going to be really bad. Really, really bad. Um, for the industry. And Grayscale is going to have issues. This is the Grayscale Bitcoin product GBDC. <laughs> Not looking so hot. Let me change. Um, what do you do? Labels. Hold on, I want to put the labels up so you guys can actually see what I'm looking at. You only hate levels, but settings, symbol, appearance. Oh, the watermark is there. You can just barely see it. There we go. So you can actually see it's GBTC. So anyway, they're struggling. Uh, I mean. If they survive, there's a potential. This is a really, really good buy, but I mean, you are you are really risk on gambling playing that bet. In all honesty, so I wouldn't touch it. And that's what's gonna suck is everything that's got a grayscale bucket is at risk. So here we have Zcash. Barry Silbert's a big Zcash guy. Um, we had a real nice downtrend here that started breaking out, which is really, really awesome. You can see these well prints shoot it up, but we printed a top signal and she rolled over in the middle of the range and now she's looking down and now we have grayscale FUD. So, um, Zcash is probably going to walk down. Maybe we get a retest mid-level here, not all the way down here, but we don't know. And unfortunately, this type of stuff is going to be news dependent, not necessarily TA dependent. So you can definitely see some of the moves here. But like if Grayscale goes belly up in the middle of a Zcash move, the Grayscale news takes precedence. Because if they're forced to market sell all their positions because they're in a bind, they're in an issue there. So if you're in kind of to explain it a little more, Twitter, let me see Winklevoss. I think it's Cameron. These are the old Facebook dudes who uh, didn't <laughs> kind of butt head, butt head, butt heads with our, uh, our homeboy there. He's currently the CEO. There it is. So Cameron Winklevoss started doing an open letter to Barry Silbert himself, um, the actual one of the CEOs of Grayscale and DCG. So this got kind of interesting on Twitter. Um, and it's a subtle read, but it is a read. You got Cameron Winklevoss, the CEO of one of the CEOs of Gem co-founder of Gemini, talking bad to the, the uh, co-founder of Grayscale. So regardless, this is out of the norm. This is unprofessional. This is unprofessional of a level where something bad is probably going to come from this. Whether it's DCG borrowing $1.7 billion from Genesis, I don't really know what's going on, but uh, basically saying, oh, you gave us a promissory note. That's the only difference from you not being leveraged. So <laughs> who knows? It, it, long story short, it looks like Grayscale money got sent to Gemini and then Gemini gave money to FTX and then FTX gave the money to... Uh, Alameda and then Alameda used the money to gamble lost the gamble so now the contagion is Alameda went down brought FTX down FTX is about to take Grayscale and DCG down if DCG goes down that's going to take down Gemini and then from there I don't know but it's it's a big game of hot potato and or like an onion it's going to be one layer at a time and all these big companies are going to sit there and struggle and try to get out of it one let you know try to survive it and pull it off and just just be careful because um all these companies will come out and say oh we're fully solvent we're great blah 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 up until the second they say hey uh we're filing for bankruptcy so don't take anything these dudes say um say for granted uh honestly if i had any exposure to any of these people i would be trying to secure it into a cold storage solution um if you don't know typically during uh what's it called um bankruptcy proceedings it's not the clients who get reimbursed first it's the investors 
So if you got money exposed to any of these dudes and they get caught with a liquidation and they get, have to file bankruptcy, they're going to pay the people that loan them money first. They're not going to pay you back first. So by all means, uh, Gemini has withdrawals that work right now. May or may not want to put, you know, your keys in your wallet and keep it all, all to yourself. Nothing wrong with that. Not worth taking the risks. But it's unfortunate. It's not what I want to see. Uh, we may see some January shenanigans. Uh, if he goes under and then he goes under, we got really big issues. Um, also, side note, there are two Winklevoss twins. And one of them has like a million followers. And the other one has 700,000 followers. So it's kind of interesting. One of the identical twins is 30% better at Twitter. So what that's worth. Figure that one out. But anyway, let's go back to the charts because that's what you guys are mainly here for. So the end of the month, I want to see I want to see the grayscale drama done. I want to see Gemini drama done. I want to see FOMC meeting at the end of the month. And then maybe we can get some stability. Also, Russia f call is calling for like a 36 hour ceasefire for tradition for a holiday or something like that. Either way, it's a step in the right direction. Um, keep in mind, and I posted this earlier, and I guess just let me cover the post right now. Yeah, I think I upset Josh with this one. Josh, not next. Yeah, here it is. So, um, I wanted to explain this one. There's certain things that are coming. Whether it's this year, 2024, 25, you have to realize that something's coming. There's multiple things coming, first off. Um, and it's just a matter of time. Like, all empires fail, all wars fail, eventually all bear markets end. Um, the Fed can't stay hawkish forever. All these pivots eventually have to happen and, like, you know, nature recovers, right? So eventually Putin's going to eventually stop this war. Um, whether that's him winning, whether that's Ukraine winning, I don't know, but eventually this thing's going to stop. Um, how it stops, I don't know, but eventually war's going to stop and then that's going to get bullish, um, for markets because it's going to be seen as stability. The last thing investors want is instability, right? Um, the bear market we're in with crypto eventually has to end and eventually we're going to form a bottom and then accumulation takes over and then we start going up and putting a top. Same thing with Fed. Fed can't tighten forever. We, like, we're not going to get to Fed rates of like 99%. Like, that's not in the cards. Um, and it looks like we're getting close to the pause. So this is actually kind of close to pausing. And then we can maybe get a pivot towards the end of this year or the beginning of 2024. That's likely where that is going to hit. All things considered, everything could change. Fed is wild crapshoot. But... If they follow their plan out, it looks like end of the year, beginning of next year, that's when they could start to consider pulling rates back down and then the market will FOMO long and then we can print a bottom of the S&P, right? Um, bear markets, we're getting into the, the Bitcoin cycle rotation. So we're getting to the time frame where we normally print the four-year, five-year cycle bottoms. <coughs> so keep that in mind. And Russia's not doing so hot in the war and they're running out of resources. So we're kind of looking towards, we could be getting towards something that's going to bottom out Russia uh, war conflict. So we're not there yet on all this stuff, but we're getting closer. I mean, just, you know, eventually sunny days show back up again. Um, and every day you get one day closer to that, right? So as bad as a recession is, as bad as, res as uh, depression is and all this other stuff, you know, every day there's a sunshine comes over the hill and we get one day closer towards the next bull run, right? So keep that in mind. It's not a, it's not bull porn and all that, but it's, you need to be realistic of what's coming. There are stuff that's going to happen and it's not something you can see on the TA, but if you have the TA lining up with the FA, uh, you can sometimes really hit gold. So just something to keep in mind. But Zcash popped. It's coming back down. Grayscale drama. It's probably going to come down some more. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 because this is what's going to dictate. So this is a chart I posted the other day. Uh, Leverage Monkey kind of triggered me. On one to, I wanted to show this. If you're using the um, runner bot on default settings four hours, it's really good. 
for S&P 500. And I want to switch the main indicator. I want to turn the volatility down a little bit. I want some colors on S&P because S&P moves really slow. So I crank this one up just a little bit to get some colors. But every time we got a four hour top on the S&P since November of 21, not 22, we've free fallen to the next support block. Boom, 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 boom. And this is where we're at right now. So since 2021, every top has come back down to a support area. Um, this one came down to this support block, the really, really key 3600. This one actually cut through this pivot block here. It's probably supposed to be that tall, which is like 4300. It actually went to it, bounced a little bit, then went through it. And then this one, which was at 4,700, came down and did bounce off the uh, the 4,240. So I should put that right there. So anyway, uh, good visual. Just realize we're in the middle of a range with a higher low. I mean, a lower high. Sorry. Um, with a top signal. So maybe this time's different. Maybe she just pulls up. But if someone was asking me what's going to happen, I think we're going to come back down here. Now, if this holds, I don't know, but we're going to come down here and probably retest this range. We tested it once in June of 2022. We came down and double tapped it in September and October. And it looks like we're on our way to probably hit it at the end of the month. Um, we'll see. Timing's going to get weird, but I think that's, I think that's what we're going to be looking at. Yeah, 3AC was in the musical chairs, but I think they just, they degen their own funds. So they skipped the Alameda drama and just took the own investor's fund and then destroyed it. For sure, Vital. We can look at DXY. I haven't looked at it in a bit, so normally DXY I go to 3-day. Because it, it doesn't move a lot. Oh, boy. Yeah, so uh, DXY has been going parabolic since like January, so it's like 12 months. We've been going parabolic here, and the colors have only been getting stronger. Normally, I look at the three-day candles on this just because it's so slow. Um, and so far, we've been calling this for like the past 12 months um, with Rainbow Theory. And we were coming up here, and the plan was we were going to hit 120, 121, and then the Fed was going to have to intervene. And she broke out of this channel. So she broke out of the channel and she started looking like she was doing a channel walk. And the channel walk came down to the support area here, which is flagged by the algo pivots of like 102. So that's the previous high from March of 2020. We got close to it, kind of bounced, came out of this channel and pounced, and now it's coming up again. So Either that's going to be considered the retest breakout and maybe we keep clumbing up or maybe she comes down and kisses that and then goes back up. That's kind of what I would be looking at. And mind you, if we see this go up, right, that's going to pull the S&P 500 down and that would line up with the top signal we just saw here. So if we get the DXY to break out, right, this is going to play out. We're going to get the 3600 test. So, um... If you're betting on the DXY going up, you need to be betting on the S&P going down. So, just how it's gonna go. And we can take a look at oil too. Four hour is what I typically recommend, and we'll put the main indicator back on defaults. There we go. And then volume is jacked up on oil, so. Way to go, trading view. I kid, I kid, trading is awesome. Um, and we don't want to look at liquidation levels on this because it's not applicable. Yeah, so we're, this is kind of like a broadening wedge. This is hindsight looking at it, but it's broadening wedge breakout, retest of a pivot, came up, top of the range, top of the range, double top, came down, and we're retesting this. So, be nice to see this start coming back up and then, but I don't know. Oil's in a really weird place. Um, diesel prices are really, really high, but gas prices are really, really low. 
for what it's worth and it's kind of weird and we've drained fully drained the uh the the, the reserves right so that's going to be an issue seeing how that gets played out and how they're going to refill the reserves um or if well they have to eventually but um i don't really know where that's going to go yet gas prices are way down um diesel's just barely coming down so keep that in mind um and frankly the diesel is what runs the entire industry so um as far as like commercial like all your 18 wheelers all your trains and stuff like that uh, it's just how it's gonna go but anyway take a look at dji real quick yeah dji is topping out too it's a perfect rollover and falling back down. And this is probably going to be more of that time frame. It's going to take a while to bleed out, but that's what we'd be looking for. And it's not that I I want the, the S&P and the DJI Dow Jones to come down. That's just what the colors are telling me and what the bots are saying. So I'm just going to give you the unbiased call. That's what that's saying is she's rolling over. The RSI prints have stopped printing. We got a top signal and now she's pulling back. Like it's, that's your magnet. That's where she wants to come back down to and retest this. And this is what we've been retesting, right? So is what it is. Um, maybe you could get a bounce there at 32, 286. There's a pivot there off of that pivot mark, but likely you're going to come down here would be my guess, but we'll see. We shall see. Uh, yeah, Tron's been getting tested. Who Boy Fallout is actually kind of in the news right now. And I don't know what to make of it. Usually Justin Suntrong uh, does well in drama. But hell, this thing's less volatile than uh, Bitcoin. It's falling out, though. Yeah. On the one hour, we have a bunch of pivots stacked here at 51 cents. So if it breaks through 51, though, buckle up and look for like 48. But that's still not that much of a move. Six percent. Yeah. It looks volatile, but it's not. If that was the big move. This is just chop. Big move. Chop. So we're nowhere near a reversion band. sort through some stuff and get back to coin excuse me coin base five let me see holy cow so LCX is actually pumping <laughs> it's up 35% on the daily let's go shout out LCX and if anything screams out to you it should be the cluster of well prints that formed before this, the sale got shot that's awesome. True is another one. No. Everything else is like 3-4% on the daily. So that's the only thing I could see pumping on Coinbase. And it's hitting the secondary reversion band. So I I wouldn't late long this. But I'd be looking to take profits for sure if you have it. Especially with a white RSI print. Hmm. So good. CRX, Chop Chop, Cardano. Cardano's kind of... Hey. It's not bad. Triple, triple, well print. CRX with a bottom, bottom. Just kind of looking. What about the meme coins? How's Doge doing? If you guys have any requests, spam the chat. Yeah, so Doge did come down for that bottom test, so that's awesome to see that. And it's kind of a channel walk into the support here. It's Doge though, so keep that in mind. Doge is super, super volatile. Especially if Elon even mentions it. But it looks like we're pulling back out. We had a bottom print here, a bottom print here. Disregard that one, obviously, because it's in the middle of the range, but... We're tapping into support, pulling up, and we're showing support retest 
there and there potentially. So maybe we could get a mean reversion back up. Um, and that would be awesome to get it to here, which is you're looking at 53% trade. Holy cow. And if we go real stupid, it'd be 120, but huh. I'm actually kind of interested in this. I normally don't like talking doge, but so I'd be looking at resistance here at eight dollar eight fifty nine twenty five and then eleven cents is what we would be looking for. So we'd be looking for moves up TP one if we can get past that TP two if we can get past that TP three past that we're talking moon boy stuff um which we may or may not get but don't ever always bet on that like take profits on the way up so that'd be like tp1 tp2 tp3 so what's up clark nova uh 260 bnb is in a weird spot bnb took down ftx it oh, it moved a lot today. So it's moving like Ethereum. Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's not drawn on this chart, but for the most part, you have this. You have a downtrend that's trying to break out. This is, I want to make sure I'm on the Binance. Yeah, actually Binance. So um, you have support block here. I can draw it. There's technically, it's technically two, but let's just draw it as one. Um, she's moving out, so let's look for a breakout and then go. And you're gonna want to see volume, which we don't have. We don't have homeboy volume like this over here, right? So we want to see this thing rock and roll. And right now she's not, but she kind of has broken the downtrend. However you want to draw it, that's with log on. And that candle here is the FTX thing, fiasco. So it's not bad, but the like this is a better setup than Ethereum, right? But if Ethereum in the middle of the range like starts pulling down and you see BNB follow it, I I wouldn't get super diamond handish with an entry here at like 250, right? So be careful with that because this looks like the pump on Ethereum. So if that makes sense, let me know because. That's what would concern me. Albeit, this doesn't have the initial pump, but... They say the real ones move in silence. <laughs> Accumulation. Let me check CBC. CBC's been wild. I wish I could catch those candles. I've tried a few times to figure out how to automate looking at that, but it's really, really hard. I haven't cracked it. Let's take a look at some DeFi Ave. Ave's all right. Bro. Basic attention. Oh, K and C. This is one I wanted to show you guys. So RSI prints that get. So there's a lot of confluence on the KNC chart, and this is not, I don't think this is a macro bottom, but I wanted to review it. We had a big drive here on KNC, and you can see how many X markers we printed. This is our RSI tool with Rainbow Trends. And then eventually we started printing candles that had no RSI that was close to this reversion band. So the odds are this thing bouncing are really, really high, and then we got an entry signal here or a bottom signal at that candle, right? So you have confluence of the reversion bands, you have confluence of the RSI, and then you also have the color OG candle color rotation, right, as well, where you have orange going into yellow and then kind of rotating out and then going back to the weaker reds, and then she's fully pulled back up. Well, not fully pulled back up, but she has moved up 8%. So in general, this counts and you need to pay attention to it. You can kind of see where it did it here. The colors weren't as extreme on the RSI and then it bounced, but it kind of went sideways before it went down again. But regardless, that type of rotation into a reversion band normally will get you some action. So 
for you micro scalper degens, you can wait for this on like the four hour to quit printing the RSI X's. So as soon as you get a four hour to close that doesn't have an X on it, like pay attention. That's the candle that should wake you up. Now, sometimes you got to give it some because sometimes it'll bounce, come back down and print them again. But in general, you start getting multiples that don't have X's. It's likely the bulls are going to come back and eat. Um, whether or not it's a full reversion or just a, a scalp, we don't really know. But you can see they've at least pushed it back up and they've tested this double pivot. So this may be all she wrote and she keeps coming back down. But this reversion was predictable. Um... You know, it's actually saying bottom. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, and if we can get above this, rock and roll, right? But KNC has been a shit show ever since uh, Caroline dumped it. This is one of the first things she dumped before she told the whole world uh, she was leveraged to the gills and about to uh, lose, what was it, 22, $22, or whatever it was, FTT needed to stay above. So... Anyway, just a, a quick tech tip there, how to read confluence on some of these like lower cap coins. Because that type of confluence, you can find it in a lot of different coins, and it's just a matter of you hitting it. Um, sorry, I was memeing here. Jared Gray, the founder of, uh, not the founder, the current head sushi chef for sushi posted a new profile pic, and sushi pumped. So I was real bullish on his new headshot. I do want to take a look at Sushi in case Crypto ISO starts coming in on this again. Did I just lose my... I might have. Oh, well. Yeah. Test, 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 test. Move back up. Retest there. Go back to 4-hour. Yeah. So 4-hour has a double pivot there. And that's what's going to be king of the castle as far as resistance. Let me switch that to green, and then we'll make this one red. So this is our trading range for Sushi. And since we're talking Crypto ISO's favorite, we'll throw in liquidation levels. So shout out to Crypto ISO. Oh, that's cool. It hit it to a T. Let me adjust it for this shorter time frame, because I mainly want to look at the data that's here. Yeah. So that's so cool. Let me see what it's saying. Yeah, it's close. So you can see the retest, bam, 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 on the 50Xs. <laughs> so, pretty cool. Anyway, I do want to look at cake just because I like cake. I really don't like cake in real life, but. Uh, not so good. Decent, but not so good. See how Costco's doing. Oof, Costco's not doing so good. Uh, shout out to Costco. You still have the dollar fifty hot dogs, but apparently you need the food pet. You, you apparently need a membership now to eat at Costco, which is not cool. Not a fan of that. Um, and we are really getting into make or break time. You see this wick here that went down to four forty nine. We are at right at four fifty. But man, if this if this starts holding here at four fifty such a psychological number and curves like i'm gonna get really really wanting to long that personally what's up clark nova thank you for the follow we're trying to keep this stream low key so maybe maybe don't tell your friends about it keep our, our numbers low so we don't blow up and get an ego hmm. costco costco Take a look at um, Target. And by the way, if you're in the Discord or know the Discord, is that Target Target? Yeah, Target Corporation. Nice V bottom. We got Doppel back today, so it's been real exciting in the Discord. We've missed him. So shout out to Doppel. He's back and ch chatting. Target, I'm not seeing much. Um. Uh, 
Tesla is another one. Yeah, boy. Tesla's not doing good. If you're not familiar as well, the runner bot on the H4 for Tesla is killer. Absolutely killer. Um, I've posted enough about it. You guys can tell. For whatever reason, uh, oil on H4 and actual electric car Tesla does really well on the runner bot with no modifications. So let me turn liquidation levels off. I'm waiting for a bottom privet here. This is crazy plunge in the reversion rainbow. But if we lose 100, I don't know. Maybe we're going to keep trucking. And this is a really weird asset because people compare Tesla to like automotive companies. And you flat out can't and shouldn't, in my opinion. Um... At its peak valuation, Tesla was worth more than the entire American automotive industry, and it was just a selective EV company. So it's not an automotive company, in my opinion. It's a tech company. Um, it's somewhere between Ford and Google. That's kind of how I see it. Plus, uh, you can't long uh, SpaceX. So I think if you invest in Tesla, that's kind of a way in investing in SpaceX. It's kind of how I see it. But she doesn't trade like Chevrolet or Ford or Toyota. And I don't think she be, should be considered that because the market cap doesn't make sense. Like the amount of cars that Tesla makes and you look at that on like the, the market cap does not make sense. So it's it's really a, a tech company is how I kind of look at it. So people constantly want to compare these these charts like general motors and they're like oh da, 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 da. and it's like you can't there it's not anywhere close to the same thing sure gm's got an electric hummer that's a quarter million dollars that's awesome but chill out um but maybe this is the hint that tesla needs to release the cyber truck so i can buy a cyber truck and pretend i'm in my master chief and run around town and a giant Aluminum, no, it's stainless steel bodied vehicle. That's what I would like. It just flat out looks like CGI. I don't really care if the truck's electric. It just looks cool. So, but most likely what will happen, I'll probably be moving to a the larger Toyota Tundra. The one I have now is the smaller four-door. And now with two kids and now two dogs, un unplanned. Uh, with the two dogs, I'm running out of backseat room. So my my cousin is a head tech at Toyota, and he showed me today. He actually has the TRD Pro Hybrid, and the TRD Pro Hybrid is basically it has hybrid motors to make it faster, uh, and it's insanely fast and awesome, and turbocharged and all these other things. But I'll probably try to find one of the last years of the 5.7 liter V8 just because I've. I've been working on that engine since 2008, and I know it really well and trust it. So, problem is, car market is crazy expensive. I actually saw a used Toyota TRD Pro for like $110,000 at a lot, and I just I can't comprehend a, your, your daily driver being anywhere close to the cost of like any size chunk of a mortgage. So you can buy three T TRD Pro, use TRD Pros, or buy a house. That's just crazy. I'm not. I'm not doing that. So shout out to Toyota for making really, really good trucks that don't break down so much. I really, really like the Tundras, and I'm on my second one, 100, almost 182,000 miles on this one, and it still drives like the day I bought it. I do want to check Ethereum Classic. Wow, I missed that one. I've not paid attention to this coin. I'm getting some reverse BART vibes? So that's really cool, right? This one's a little harder to read because the colors and the RSIs weren't as clear on it, but... Uh, that's a top signal on a two hour. How big was this move? It looks big. 30%, 26%, wow. That's not bad. That's not bad. Mm. This may be some good shorting. Optimism? I got convinced to buy some of that. 
into last year. It did not go well. Doesn't look bad. Kind of looks wedgy to me, but I'm not a fan of wedge charts. Uh, I'd definitely be watching for the breakout, though. Because that's if that is the top of the wedge, she's gonna come back and retest something down here. Or this could be the move of the initial breakout. And if it's the new move of the initial breakout, she's gotta break through 115-ish. And that's the top here that was rejected twice so far, right? Uh she got had contention there too. So 115 is gonna get really, really respected. But if she breaks through 115, you're definitely looking at resistance here at 140 to 140 basically 150 and if you get that move don't <laughs> you better be taking profits up there because you're very fortunate to get that don't expect it to go 300 up whatever take your 50 percent call today or 35 percent that's a good play right so Let me check the trading view chart that got sent. So this is Heart Nova put this up. So this is Tesla versus oil on the daily. Yeah. That's hard. I don't maybe there's some correlation between EVs, but the problem is is none of the EVs are cheap. So like if your gas like at the end of the day, if gas is hurting you, like a Honda Civic is is uh, the best option, um, not an eighty thousand dollar Tesla. And that's what's kind of bothered me with the American electric cars. Like they're not, they're bringing in like two hundred thousand dollar Teslas and electric Escalades, not Teslas, uh, Hummers and Escalades and shit like that. And it's like, that's cool, but like, <laughs> I I could really use a twenty thirty thousand dollar electric vehicle that gets two hundred fifty mile range. And, you know, actually help out a normal person, not someone who, I mean, I don't know about you guys. Maybe you guys are buying multiple $200,000 cars. I hope not, but I mean, well, F it. If, if that's what you want to do, I hope so. But uh, in my opinion, if we're going to drop $200,000, it better not be on a Gucci Escalade. <laughs> Call me old. <laughs> I don't care. Like, we're not out of stuff that I actually want to look at. Until Bitcoin really, really moves out, I'm not so crazy on a lot of stuff. Let me check out Exxon. We haven't looked at X. We haven't looked at uh, stocks like this in a bit. So yeah, Exxon's looking like she could be showing up for another breakout. Let me move to four hour. I don't like six hours on uh, trade fight charts. So Exxon Mobil. Like I said, uh, why the hell the runner bot works really, really good on H4 on oil companies and then Tesla? I don't know, but it really does. Pay attention to these H4 tops. They're really deadly. Um, but all I'm seeing here is we're at the top of the range, but she's sitting there doing higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. Man, maybe Exxon's about to rock. Maybe. Someone's got to get diesel. I mean, if diesel stays that high, Exxon's going to keep pumping. Check Oxy, Occidental Petroleum Corporation, formerly known, uh, a lot of people know it as um, Anadarko. Wow, those bottoms are really good. Man, maybe, maybe, maybe Anadarko Oxy is going to roll. They're kicking a lot of ass in the Gulf of Mexico, so it makes sense to me. Let me draw the support down here just because it bothers me if we don't. That'll be awesome. If she can hold this midline at like $63 and hold above it, this will be your magnet up here at like 76, 75. That'd be a hell of a play. Oop, not what I wanted. See you, Clark. Whatever part of the world you're in. It's like nine o'clock here. I 
Exxon Mobil. Look good in the home builder space. Uh, home builders. Yeah, I did want to look at gold, actually. Glad you mentioned that. Gold is so slow. Let me go to 3D. So, little, little rainbow trend tweak. If it just looks like pyramids out the wazoo, go to the main indicator. Turn your well print sensitivity way up and throttle those things down. I can't make it auto tune on this one. We have to adjust accordingly. So eventually, this shit, this shit, gold is acting really weird. Mind you, this isn't a stock. This is telling me price per ounce. Maybe. Wow, none of this is messing with it. Well, in that case, if you're dealing with something that doesn't have real volume because it's just a price, turn the whale prints off. Did you notice the visible range doesn't work on this? It's because the volume's not there. Yeah, so gold, um, there's a support pivot here. Vital. There. She went right through it. So maybe we can get a retest of like 2,000 bucks an ounce. If not, you're looking at the lower pivot to like 1970. So to me, that's, that's whale accumulation personally. That's how I see it. When you see tight ranges moving in a perfect shape like that means some big boys buying that's how i see it tol so let's look at the home building stuff because i'm actually kind of interested in that is that toll brothers sounds good toll brothers sounds like a housing company so they got slammed on covid 14 dollars to 62 wow this stock moves really, really slow, but you can see the double test on those pivots. Now she's moving back up. So she can break up from 53, look for 68. Uh, Avco. I think JP Morgan is really gonna kick booty. I really don't wanna bet against Jamie Dimon ever. Kind of becoming a bigger and bigger fan of that dude. He's really controversial, but he just, he just doesn't give any fucks. Um, if I'm going to call that a channel walk from 2021, but I see it. Problem is she's that's decent colors. One day. Wow. Okay, so one day is that's a really good top signal. These are not, but that one was. So with Confluence, if you've got resistance and you print the top, that's good. She's a little chattery here, but decent. I check JP Morgan, JPM, and then I'm going to have to get going soon. We got a top signal on Jamie. On the four hour as well. The massive resistance block here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's like a there's gonna be a block there that's gonna be a nightmare to get through. Not saying they won't, it just I, you're not gonna wick right through that. Um, let me go back and look at it daily now that we can see that. So she's gotta work her way back up. But so far she's up from hundred to 135. So for that big of an asset, 30% move, that's awesome. But color rotations, RSI rotations, top signal, not bullish. But it's kissing off the runner, the, the the channel walker. So this might be your support that holds it before the move up. It's easier to trade when you see that bounce through and cut through the channel walker. But here you've got to question it. It's not that you can't manage that accordingly. It's just the problem is, is if she breaks down and you don't have yourself prepared, that will catch you with your pants off. Pants down. <coughs> And can eat you alive if you don't have the, the proper management. So. Anyway, I want to check Platinum too. Platinum. Oh, 
Fog is working its way up. I love seeing the wiggles that break out. That looks to me like SOS symbols. Um, if you're a Wyckoffian, albeit that's not going to be a Wyckoff setup, but I do like that. Um, but there is a freaking top signal. So I tend to try to not fade the bots, but sometimes you can get this and then she goes up for another move. But anyway. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to get out of here. I got to get ready for work tomorrow. Um, thanks for stopping by. And if you're new here and are curious why the charts look so interesting, it is because we're using Rainbow Train Tool Suite. I'm fully biased because I wrote them all and I use them all daily. Um, but if you want to find out about what we're about or join the Discord, hop on the Discord, no paywalls. Come hang out, um, talk to the OGs, ask them questions. We have free tools as well. The free tools are in the Discord as well as you could do. Um, you can do a free subscription and get links to all the free too. So no cost, no don't have to put in your credit card or anything like that. But you can definitely sign up that way. Join the community and turn your charts into something cool. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. And let me see if any friends are on Twitch. If they are, we can go... Send you guys over to them real quick. Um. No, I'm not seeing anybody. All right. Well, anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. It was fun. Um, I'll try to keep doing this a little more consistent. I'm trying to shoot for Thursdays. If that works for you guys, if it does, let me know.